and uh, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about uh, plate girder design. It's going to take us about uh, four series, so it's going to be uh, uh, four different uh, videos. And this will be uh, video number one, part one. And uh, we're going to do a plate girder design and cover plate. And why do we need these? Sometimes when you design a, a beam, because uh, uh, your load is too heavy and your span is too great, and when you're going in a steel book and you can't find a W section that's satisfied. So you might have to do different things uh, to uh, uh, come up with one. Our first episode is going to be a cover plate beam design. And let's work on this and take a look at the problem. As we go through, I will explain things step by step, where things come from, and where in a spec we're going to use. So we got this problem here. We got this beam. is about 40 feet long, and you have a dead load of six kip per foot, life load of 9.5 per 9.5 kip per foot. Uh, it's a 50 KSI steel. We are limited to maximum D to be 29.5 inches. And uh, so uh, let's get to work and uh, we're going to use both allowable stress design and load resistant factor. One of, the, one of the first thing I want to do, let's guess at the weight of the beam. And go high, so that way you don't have to come back adjusted. Let's say about three, 400 pounds, it's 350 pounds. So uh, assume uh, beam weight to be 350 pounds per foot. So my dead load becomes 6.35. And let's calculate our load both in both LFRD and ASD. And this is LFRD is going to be 1.2 times uh, 6.35 plus uh, 1.6 times the life load, which is uh, 9.5 kip per foot. And that's going to come out 2282 per foot. In AST, we're just going to add both of them. It's going to be, uh, this will be W, U, and uh, LFRD. In AST, will be W, A, which is 635, dead load basically, plus life load of 9.5, and that kind of 15.85 kip per foot. Okay. So the next thing I want to calculate is the bending moment caused by these load. And we know bending moment from the beam formula is WL squared. So um, our max moment for uh, a uniform display load based on beam formula from table, I got on a, right, the table right there. It is WL squared divided by eight. My uh, MU, it's going to be W became uh, 2282. L square and L is a 40 square and divide that by 8 and that comes 4,564 foot kip. We're going to do the same thing in allowable stress design. MA come out to uh, WL square 1585 and L is a uh, 40 square divided by 8 and 3,170 foot kip. So we're just going to go ahead like we're going to design a beam. Assuming this is l fully lateral support, so we're not going to have any buckling issue and a flange. And uh, so now the moment that caused by the load is that. And we're going to go ahead and find out the capacity of the beam that we're looking for. It should be better than this. But we're going to go ahead and use, uh, because we're using a plastic design, we're going to go ahead and use Z, uh, plastic section module. So we're going to find Z first, and from Z we can find the moment. What is the required Z to beat this? or to equal this. Okay, uh, Z required is what I have on a board, and that's basically, that can come from, uh, if you uh, take uh, 
F21 and kind of rework it, that be that equation, which is mu divided by uh, phi b Fy. This is for LRFRD, and then we transfer things over to ASD. So let's go ahead and find out what z is. And our z going to come out to, uh, uh, our moment came out to 4564. 4564. Be careful, that's a foot kip. So now, divided by, phi is a 0.9. Fy is 50k aside. There's a, a problem here. So we're going to multiply by 12 here to make it inch, and therefore z required come out to 1,217 inch cube. Right. So now we have z. We're going to go ahead to a, a table in a steel book and find out what section we can get this. And if you l take a look at it, uh, what I have on the board, we can end up with the uh, W uh, 14 by 605 and W uh, 14 by 730, W 14 by 6. 65, and these are really not practical. They're way too heavy. So we're going to go ahead and abandon this. We're not going to select this. We're going to go ahead and select something else, and then we're going to put a cover plate on it to fix this. So if I go ahead and um, we're going to go to the steel book, we're going to find something lighter. Let's try W. Uh, Twenty-seven by uh, one forty-six, and the reason we picked this one is because we have a limitation on a D here, and our total depth cannot be more than twenty-nine point five inches. So W twenty-four by seventy-six will give me D of. Uh, 27.4 inches and Z X of uh, 464 our BF is going to be 14 inches so basically this D comes out to uh, um, 27.4 let me write this in different color Twenty-seven point four inch, twenty-seven point four inches, and our B come out to uh, fourteen inches, which let it be for now. And now you can notice there's there's a big difference between Z X of this beam and the required Z X. How are we gonna make up the this difference? We're gonna make up this difference by putting two plate on top of this beam and that will close the gap for us. Let's put a one inch plate on top of this. Let me draw this out a little bit here. Let's see if I can do a good job. So our TP, TP is equal one inch on both. TP is equal one inch. And therefore my total length is going to become 20D my D is going to become 27.4 plus 2, which is equal to uh, 29.4 and 29.5. So we made our limit. OK, now how big this plate is going to be? That's what we're going to do. Let me erase it a little bit right here, and then we'll come back to it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the area of this steel based on the required Z. Take a look what I have on the board. So my area is going to come out to area of the plate comes out to uh, uh, Z required minus Z 
of the W shift that we selected and divide that by a D plus TP. And we have all that information. So Z required came out to be 1217. And minus ZW, which I erased, 464. And divided by D came out, D is 27.4. 27.4 plus TP is 1 inch. And that area is going to come out to uh, 26.51 inch square. So now here's the thing as a designer. you got to be careful. Don't stay too close to here. Don't go to 1 by 27. Let's go to 1 by 28. Pick it up, and you're going to be surprised that you could have gone even larger. So let's say, OK, we're going to uh, make the plate uh, 28 inches. So the plate is going to be uh, 1 inch by 28. Basically, this distance be uh, 28 inch. Go ahead and calculate the new Z of this whole beam, the new beam. So I'm going to say Z, furnished or new beam. Uh, let's say furnished, not new beam. And that's going to be uh, the Z of the W shape, which was 464. Plus. Now, to calculate the Z, Z of the plate, we did this before on a previous one. Or you can look up my, uh, um, how do you calculate the uh, elastic uh, uh, section module. If we have this center of this beam, it's going to be right here. Let me diffuse a different color like that. Um, let's say this is a plastic neutral axis. OK? And we said the area below the plastic neutral axis multiplied by the distance from the neutral axis to the center of that area. All right? So we're now we're going to go ahead and we have two plate. OK? There's two plus two of them. The area of the plate is 1 by 28 time 1 time 28. This is the area of the plate, AP, time the distance from the center here to this plastic neutral axis. So from here to here is 27.4 divided by 2. And to the center of this is half inch, plus 0.5. So that comes 1259.2, which is bigger than our uh, Z required 1217. So now we're good here. OK? Now we're going to go ahead, take the z, calculate the moment, and compare them to the mom uh, moment by the applied force. So our nominal moment is Fy times c. And we can divide that by 12, because that comes out to inch cube. We don't want inch cube. We want uh, foot cube. So go ahead. Let's do it. Fy came out to 50. M and z equal 50 times z, z came out to 1259.2. Let's divide that by 12. And that gave me a foot 5246.7 foot kip. So now we can bring in this our moment. I'm going to say uh, this is a, a capacity of the uh, beam, the new beam that we have. So it's a phi time MN, which is the capacity of this new beam that we have built, is 0.9 multiplied by uh, 5246, 5246.7. And that comes out 4722 foot kip. And this is the capacity of our new beam, which is bigger than 4564 and checks out. Too close. I don't like it. But anyway, let's go ahead and here's what we're going to do in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate uh, in a, a, a allowable stress design, MN divided by omega B. One of these days I'm going to make omega looks, but uh, that is 5246.7 divided that by 1.67. And that comes out to. Uh, 
fourth kip, which is, oh, less than that, 3170, no good. And that's the difference between uh, allowable stress design and low resistance factor design. And I work with a lot of engineers that they learned this stuff in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and they always use allowable stress design. Now this method came in, and they're still reluctant to go to this method, and this is one of the reasons. You always feel more comfortable if you have something bigger. So if it didn't make it, make it here, it didn't make it there. That means you got to go ahead and make this plate a little bit bigger uh, to make it here. Basically, all we're going to do is going to uh, uh, come back in here. That's your assignment, by the way. You can do it on your own, and it's pretty easy. W what we got to do is create the area a little bit bigger. So let's make it 1 inch by 30. And uh, if you go b 1 inch by 30, what happened? Your Z is going to be a little bit different, and your moment is going to be uh, bigger, and it will pass. So uh, stay tuned for the next uh, uh, plate design. I hope you liked it, and give me a thumbs up if you do.